today we are doing some spoon twin block caliper install. Pretty cool dude, this stuff came straight from the Philippines. These calipers are not cheap, these are a set of $2,000 calipers. I've already opened it, got excited. Jumped the gun on that one. Brand new spoon calipers straight from the Philippines. Got them from my guy in Fresno, California. Paul at IDT Customs. Really a stand up dude, I bought quite a few parts from that guy. There's a lot of scams going on and if you want to get quality, reputable parts from a reputable dealer, Paul is the way to go at IDT, okay? And then there's also Steve at HMO. I've talked about that before. Steve's a pretty reputable guy too. I've been to his shop personally. Aside from all that, in your spoon caliper kit, it's gonna come with these two washers and you can refer to them as shims if you want. Based on whether you have a, let's see, I can't remember exactly. It's really cool because the instructions are in Japanese, right? But it, it shows nice like convenient. a basis. <laughs> yeah, it shows how you do it and all that, but it's convenient torque specs and friends. everything. I'm not gonna open this up. To me, this is really cool to have and just leave it preserved in the packaging. It's got all the torque specs, teaches you how to bleed them, what the torque spec of the bleeder valves are. If you have an EG2, EK4, or an EK9, DC2, DV8 Type R, 98, 6, 96 spec Integra Type R, you're going to put the shim on the caliper side up against the bracket on the spindle. If you have a DC2 or DV8 Type R from 98 spec Integra Type R, you're going to put the shim on the outside of the bracket on the spindle where the bolt goes. Like I said, it's in Japanese. There's plenty of information out there on this already. I'm not going to open this. Don't you know Japanese like a little bit? No, I don't. You don't? Who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody. It was some kind of Honda nerd, but it, was, it might not have been you. This caliper kit comes with not only the shims that I showed you guys, but it comes with new bolts as well that bolt up to the caliper itself. I already got the fastened the driver's side installed. It's just up for mock-up purposes, just to see if there was any kind of research or whatever that I had to do before I made a video on it. Wanted to give you guys as much information as possible. Check that out. With these calipers, you're able to use spoon-specific brake pads, or you're able to use Integra Type R brake pads as well. In my case, with the Integra Type R brake pads that came on the five lug that I bought, the brake pads are brand new, and I'm just going to be swapping the pads over from the old caliper onto the spoon calipers. There's really nothing more to it. We're just gonna jump into it. There's two 17s, 114 for the brake line, and then the caliper comes off. Got the dust shield in two spots, installed the new caliper with the new bracketry and the hardware. That's all there is to it. Real simple install. I got a list of specs here and a little bit of research that I, I have been doing to make sure that I give you guys as much information on this as possible. These are twin blocks and there's twin blocks and there's mono blocks. So the twin blocks are a little bit smaller set and the mono blocks are a lot larger. The twin box looks like it shows the specs are for a EK9 or DC2R with a 282 millimeter rotor. The mono blocks are for the ZF1, S2000, TSX, CL7 with a 300 millimeter rotor. And the model block fits EK9 and DC2 Type R, but requires a 300 millimeter rotor. So as far as the knuckles that you're gonna need or the spindles that you're gonna need, it does matter. So you're gonna need a EX, SI, CTR, or RTR, or GSR knuckle. If you use a EX, SI, or GSR spindle, you're gonna need a 10 inch rotor. If you're CTR or ITR, you're gonna to wanna to reuse the 11 inch rotor, which is what we have right here. That's what we pulled off the car. That's all the information I have on that. You're gonna need an angle grinder or a cutting wheel of some sort to cut the dust shield. You're gonna need a ratchet, electric, or just standard old school. Works just fine. 17 millimeter for the caliper brackets themselves. 14 mil for the brake line, banjo bolt. And then an eight mil to bleed the bleeder valves on the new calipers. So yeah, bro, let's just jump right into this. First thing I'm gonna do is break that 14 mil on the back loose. The 14 mil right here on the back for your brake line. We're gonna set the 14 mil to the side and it's got my two copper crush washers on it as well. Just gonna set that over here to the side. It's a 17 right here and then there's a 17 down right here. There's only two of them. You see? So from the factory, 
Honda puts these screws into the rotor and the assembly line to hold the rotor on throughout the assembly line process. Now usually you can't just crack these free by turning them, so you gotta hit them. Here's what we're gonna do next. I should have a paint pen over here somewhere. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna follow the line right here. Just try to get it as straight as possible. So now we got our two lines here. You're gonna grab your angle grinder and you're gonna cut those two ears off. This is that step right there. So just those two ears. Brian, put your safety splints on. Both ears cut off. They're laying right here on the ground. Hey, it's buffalo season. Come pet a buffalo, Yellowstone. <laughs> Love y'all. So since this is a 98 spec Integra Type R rep, these are 98 spec spindles as well. So we're gonna have to go by the 98 spec DC2 and DB8 Type R, which is where you're going to put the shim on the back side where the bolt's at. So when you're installing these calipers, they are side specific. So just keep in mind that your bleeder valves have to be on the top and then this black hard brake line right here has to be on the bottom on both sides. So hard brake line on the bottom, bleeder valves on the top. I had to do a little bit of research on the instructions since they're in Japanese, but I verified that the two 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper itself onto the knuckle torque to 80 foot pounds. And the banjo bolt that bolts the brake line to the caliper torques to 25 foot pounds. And we will be going based off of the specifications that Spoon recommends. With this 14 millimeter bolt, you gotta make sure that, so these are brand new crush washers as of doing the installation on the five lug, but you gotta make sure you have a copper crush washer right there. So there's gonna be a copper crush washer up against the outside of the brake line, and you want another copper crush washer up against the inside of the brake line to seal the caliper itself. So just like that, one there and one there. That's how you gotta do it. Go ahead and thread that in by hand. If you use Integra Type R calipers, this little bracket right here, this squealer, um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and grind that off. So there's just a little notch right here. You just grind that off and take this bracket off because you do not need that with these calipers. So I just took my cutoff wheel and I didn't really cut into it. I just kind of sanded it down just real lightly and was able to break it off of the caliper. And this is the finished result. So this caliper is good, this caliper, this brake pad is good. And there are, of course, two, and only one of these pads will have that squealer on it. The backside pad will have the squealer on it. Okay, so we're at the point now where we're gonna remove these retaining pins for the, for the brake pads. There's two 10 millimeter nuts, one on each side. Five mil hex keys on the front. So I'm gonna keep these upper and lower specific. Um, it does not matter, it's just how I'm gonna do it. This one's the upper and this one's the lower, so we're just gonna set them off to the side like that. You can I also like to screw on the nut back and put the whole piece back together so that way if Brian decides to stand up and kick something across the shop, which he's done with my hybrid racing shift box, and the, the bolts go flying, you know where the bolts went in the driveway, just put your bolts back where they go. Another thing that really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna do it too, is with this brake pad, this is the one that had the squealer on it, you can see the grind mark here. And since this brake pad was on the back side, I'm going to put this back to the back side of the rotor because this is the pad that was seated on the back side of this rotor. Believe it or not, that does matter. So we're just gonna slide this, this caliper in. It's good habits being, because good habits make good practice. And good practice 
wins races. One day, we're gonna be like Dale Earnhardt or something of Hondas. So these calipers, these these pads have shims on them. These are shims, and what these are supposed to do is they're supposed to keep brake squeak noise down, vibrations down, noises down. Without these, you'll get a squeak, believe it or not. With the caliper and the piston squeezing the brake pads, you'll get a little bit of a squeak. So the best practice to be in, like Brian just explained a few minutes ago. You can just easily look at it and see that this is the piston side, as opposed to this side. This would be the front part of the brake caliper side where it pulls it, and this is the pusher side where the piston's at. So put it back the same way you found it. Put this shim in the exact same spot that you found it. Easy, easy enough. Inductive reasoning. Now that we got both of our brake pads installed, we're gonna go ahead and put these retainers back in. So it is really neat because these it's gonna take a lot for these to back out. And I'm sure they did this on purpose. You've gotta thread these five mil hex bolts all the way through and it threads into the caliper, plus there's a nut on the back side. So what I'm finding is the bolt, which is the five mil hex keys, those torque to 15.4 newton meters and then the 10 mil nut on the back side has its own individual torque which is 11.7 newton meters 15.4 newton meters converts over to 11 foot pounds on these five millimeter hex i don't have the proper 3 8 drive fitting to fit onto the torque wrench to torque these hex mills down so i'm just going to tighten them by hand using my best judgment should be good right there. And these two nuts on the back tighten to 11.7 newton meters, which is eight foot pounds, 8.62 foot pounds. Okay, this copper is 100% installed. Like I said, we didn't film the other side. There was no point to film the other side. So we're gonna put the camera down and finish that and then jump back into bleeding the brakes so we can finally get some brakes fluid in the system to see how the brakes work, which is gonna be cool. You can't drive the car, but having the feeling of the brake pedal is just another step closer to having this car running and I'm really starting to get excited about it. Come so far, but we still have so much further to go. All right, we got this side all bolted up, everything's torqued down to specs, and I went around every corner of the car and verified that all of the bolts on the brake system are tight. And then even checked on the inside as well. Show you guys what the previous owner had going on. He had a tucked brake line kit throughout the inside of the chassis and he put the proportioning valve right here and I found that there was a leak right here, this fitting. And me and Brian had to re-flare that today. So we're gonna be double checking that and making sure that's not leaking. And yeah, what we're gonna do is when you're bleeding brakes, you wanna start at the furthest wheel or corner away from the master cylinder and with this being right hand drive we're going to start on the passenger rear left rear all right so we came across a couple of issues it's like literally seven hours later since the last clip that we took some of the issues all of the issues actually being the previous owner and his brake line tuck kit that he did um, he has a lot of aluminum tucked lines ran within the inside of the chassis from all four corners going to a proportionate valve which I showed earlier in the clip. It's tucked up right there underneath that blanket. But the issue we were having is we would get pressure, it would blow out a flare, or it just simply, those flares, they weren't even flared at all. It seemed like 90% of the lines that we repaired weren't even flared to begin with, and they're still leaking. So I think I'm gonna put this little project on hold for a while, then do a second video on it of installing the braided brake line kit that I'm gonna buy. I gotta get a lot of brake lines. There's little brake lines like that that I gotta get. And then all the interior chassis brake lines that go to all four corners and to the proportioning valve. Those lines, those three lines right there that run up to those fittings. Not sure if you guys can see that very well, but all those fittings run to the proportioning valve right there and they are all leaking. Plan of attack, especially with what I want to do with this car is we're probably gonna end up tracking this. So steel braided brake lines all the way back to the proportioning valve is probably the more ideal route to take it anyway. So it sucks, but it is what it is. We're just making the car better. Brian's legs tired. I made him pump the brakes for seven hours. Like I'll show you guys, we got a little bit of pressure out of it. So with a Willwood uh, brake booster delete, you're supposed to have like a really hard pedal as if uh, you're in a car that isn't running and you have 
no vacuum assist, so it's just like really hard. This, like we got some pedal pressure, but it's not, it's probably like 60% out of 100%. So not ideal, not safe driving conditions for this car. So yeah, we will not be running it like that. It's just gonna take a little bit more time. This is gonna go ahead and conclude the spoon caliper installation video. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two and enjoyed the video.